All right, <clears throat> welcome back everyone to our second lecture of BC 310 Church and Ministry Administration. We're just doing some discussions, some question answers on what we have talked so far on uh, church and ministry finances. Prince, do you have a question or you forgot your question? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Anybody else? Any questions so far on church finances? What we've covered so far? There's some more to talk about. Jacqueline, yes, please. So, Pastor, this is about our Build to Impact project. So, uh, the church started um, so long ago as house church. So, is there something that you had a conviction that uh, you will build the church only after a few years or what was it that um that you decided in your mind that you will have printed places because i don't know i mean i'm not very wise financially but then i'm just curious as to know that we've spent so much on rents and versus building a church so even in central or somewhere like a major place where you started off so is there something that you would like to share pastor so about finances yeah yeah um, yeah so from a thank you for the question from a church building perspective uh, these were some other thoughts one is um putting up a building was not a priority uh, uh, the thought that that we worked with was uh, build people first. Uh, so building uh, is not a priority. It's so always build people first. So the focus was on whatever money you get, you invest in people because that's more important than putting it into a building. Another thought that guided, which still is, is um, when we're going to build build something that would be big enough for the vision so what we noticed is you know like many churches or congregations uh, the building becomes a constraint so let's say they build a building for 500 people then that becomes a constraint and they're happy if as long as you have 500 people in the building okay it's fine but what if you want to reach 10,000 people uh, a building for 500 it's not going to be practical. Uh, you know, you may have to have 20 services there to, you know, if you're going to serve 20,000 people, uh, 10,000 people. So the, our approach was uh, build people, not the building. And when you build something, build it that something that would match the vision. So our vision was always to reach people in the city, uh, as many people as we can. So we said, uh, you know, let's have these five locations. The reason of having five locations, again, was intentional. Uh, some of the thoughts behind that was um, people, the city is so big, so we cannot expect people to drive to one location. Right? It's uh, because the city is so big, practically, maybe a few will travel long distances, but people would prefer going to something that's close to them, you know, that is nearby. And so practically we said, okay, at least five locations, maybe in the future we can do more. But the city is so big, uh, you know, people in the south would prefer something close to them, not like that. So our goal was to start multiple locations. And also another reasoning behind it was when you have more locations, you can actually train up more people, right? Um, if you have only one location, well, only one person can preach the sermon <laughs> that Sunday. But when you have five locations, you can have actually five people preaching, which means you're able to train up five leaders, you know, they're all, because the way, way we are going to grow is by doing, practicing the ministry. So that was another motivation. Oh, you have more locations, you can actually build more people. Uh, there's more opportunity for people to serve in various areas, not only in preaching, but in worship and volunteering and all of that. So, uh, uh, and then there was a practical aspect that is, uh, you know, coming to a church building, if we build in the city, the cost is so high. So, you know, to get a bigger piece of land, uh, the cost is like prohibitive, you know, uh, in the city. So 
okay, let's go out a little bit, uh, buy something bigger that would enable us to build something that can serve, you know, the church. It, yeah, it's not going to be, you know, the north, south, east, west. The, those locations are already there. This is will be an additional church location, but it can it can have a bigger facility. We'll have more space and so on. So we just waited till we found that, and then. You know, in order to the actual process, there were other constraints. Like, you know, we wanted every we wanted a clean piece of land. We needed everything in white. We, you know, all the other constraints, which then came into effect when we had to consider where to buy the land, which one, which land could we buy, and so on. But at a high level starting point, the main motivators were focus on building people, not the building. Uh, second is, uh, you know have multiple locations so that um, people will go to the closest location. So yeah, we are spending money on rent uh, on uh, some of these locations, but it's okay, you know, people are going to go there. And then when you build something, build something that kind of aligns with the overall vision of the church, in our case, which is an equipping center, Bible college, and a bigger facility so it can have more people worship. So these are some of the things uh, that guided us, yeah. Yeah, so thank you, Pastor. So um, after we build the church in um, Devnahali also, so all the locations will continue as normal, Pastor? Yes, yes. So every location will continue. So Devnahali will be our sixth location in Bangalore. So okay. because that, you know, the church is, uh, so north, south, east, west will all continue. Okay. And as these locations grow, uh, if we need to build something closer to those locations, we can consider. But at least we'll have one location to start with, which is Devanhali, and it's a good location because you know uh, the city is going to is slowly growing that side, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, there will be uh, a good population of people. Like let's say over the next five ten years, there will be you know Devanhali town which will become like a second city. A lot more people will come, and so we can have a good congregation there as well. Okay. And uh, but common events, everybody can go there and use it, weddings, etc. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Sure, sure. Any other questions, Francis? Uh, Pastor, you felt then in in your ministry, you felt any depth any time, and if it, you felt how you like um, managed or how you deal that problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, thank God that uh, you know at APC we have never been in debt. We, from beginning, our, prince, uh, our our goal was always to be debt free. Like whatever we do, uh, we'll do it debt free, no debt. So till today, from the time we started in two thousand one till now, there's been no debt at all, and we're not in debt. Uh, so, for example, even buying the land for the church. Uh, we had all the money, actually more than enough money in the bank. And then we kept searching. You know. And then when we found the right piece of land, it was very simple. They just give one check and everything is paid. And now when we are getting ready like for the construction, of course, it's a, it's a long process, getting approvals and all that. But uh, that's the same thing. That is, we will have the money, then start the work. You know? So we won't be in debt at any time. Right? And we'll always have more than enough money um, for the construction and the operation of the church. And we're also thinking, right? So once you see the thing with this is in building a big, build, big facility. Once you build it, it's not just building it. Once you build it, there is cost to run it, right? So example, think about Devanali, right? So once we build that big campus and put other building, huh? You got to build it, but now. You'll have electricity bill, you'll have <laughs> water bill, you'll have so many other expenses happening, right? So it's not just about buying the land and building the building. It's about, hey, you've got to run the place. Um, and so we, are, we want to be in a position where uh, we'll be financially strong to keep running the place. And so Bible College will be running there and uh, other things that we can do, so church services, conferences, everything, so everything that today we are spending money, like, when you want to do a men's conference, women's conference, we're spending money outside. We will save all that. You know, we will do all the conferences there. It'll be good facility. People can come, be like a nice 
place to go to, they can rest and all that. So uh, we, have, we have to think also in terms of the cost to run the place, you know, um, all that. And so um, to answer your question, we've um, never been in debt. And the way we want to operate is completely debt free. Yeah. So this is very different from the way many churches in America operate. Many churches in America today are in huge debt. You know, they buy these huge land and start building the building and it all looks nice. But actually the church will be millions or hundreds of, you know, uh, I don't know, millions of dollars in debt. You know, so everything looking at it. So, but then that what happened becomes a big burden on the pastor, on the congregation. So the pastor always has to preach messages that will bring people back. <laughs> he can't preach anything that will cause anybody to leave. Uh, he has to be careful. Otherwise, he, you know, how will he clear the debt for the church? So this is a big problem in America. Uh, we see, we notice in uh, the American church. The ministries look good, but you look at the reality behind it. Huge financing debt is there. And um, yeah, it's a big problem. So it's you know we're grateful to God that we've always been out of debt, and we will continue that way. You know, the way we work. Yeah, and that's something we try to tell other churches and ministries: like, don't go into debt doing God's work. Never, you know. So sometimes pastors come and ask me, so like, uh, can I borrow money to buy the land? Can I borrow money to build buildings? And no. no. Do not go into debt to do God's work. If you're going to do God's work, do it debt free. It's okay if you wait, but do it debt free. Don't go into debt. Because it causes so much tension, so much problems to people. And uh, yeah. And the worst thing is when they borrow money from church people. You know, like if you borrow money from the Congress, I'll give it back to you. Uh, and then, in fact, just uh, last week, one pastor came Bangalore in Bangalore. He came and met me. He shared his heart. Like, yeah, last week, yeah, last week. He came uh, seven years in ministry, and uh, of course, not he's just you know like starting and all that. But already now he made some mistakes and all that. In, for the hall that they had, uh, so he didn't buy anything, just to set up the hall. You know, he borrowed four lakhs from somebody, believer. Before now, the congregation has dispersed. People have gone. Uh, he has only two families left, but he has a burden of four lakhs. See now, it is so much tension for him. Yeah, uh, or whatever some mistakes made happened, so congregation is left. So where you now for his own survival, he, he needs money, but uh, plus he has four lakhs debt taken for just to do the hall, rent the place. Difficult situation. So always. I tell people, do ministry without debt. Keep that as a principle. Don't get into debt. Now, I know there are you know pastors and testimonies who they say, yeah, I borrowed so much money and I paid back. And all. That is okay. It's good. But it's better to be debt free. Yeah. Yeah. Question? Uh, so, Pastor, as uh, we discussed before regarding uh, fundraising, mm. so uh, we mentioned like we discussed like there is like general fund and then mission fund. So, uh, is it always necessary to keep separate fundings or just keep it one fund, general fund, and use it from there for everything? Because mm. mm. sometimes I don't know, but I was thinking like if we keep it like general fund and then like fund for mission trip something people may also think like okay i was giving to the general fund they may not we will not have we may not reach what the budget we are expecting for the 
certain fund mm -hmm. so so the way it works is see uh, all almost all the money people give to us it automatically goes into the general fund and everybody knows and it's also stated on our website that from the general fund all the other work will happen you know so somebody when they give money to the general fund they are actually being part of everything the church is doing like they are being part of the missions they are being part of children's catalyst or everything church is doing they are being part of it because money is going from the general fund to all the other ministries now this fund right actually it's all internal it's only in the system bank account we have only like one bank account like uh, actually not one but we have uh, like in, we have kept it in two banks i think now yeah it's dfc and uh, access bank so we have that two bank accounts and within that we have separate account for building fund but otherwise it's only one bank account like the general fund is one bank account all goes there only internally in the software system we are keeping all the different headers so where the money is going we are tracking it so when people give they give to the general fund but from there they are actually being part of everything church is doing now sometimes some people feel they want to give particular to something they feel like i want to give for missions i want to give to support the outreach pastors i want to give for public case like they feel okay we have a facility for that i mean you give the money you tell us where you want us to use it so they will send us an email saying please use i have given this amount please use it for that then that amount we will designate for that but really that amount is only a small portion of what we actually spend so example to support outreach pastors every month we are spending about 2 and 1/2 lakhs at least it may be more this is the just the supporting 2 and 1/2 every month so somebody says i, I want to give 25000 for outreach pastors it is okay we will give put the 25000 as part of the money that goes to the outreach pass but actually we are spending 2 and 1/2 lakhs but they have given 25000 the 25000 becomes part of that 2 and 1/2 lakhs that will go out to the outreach pass but every month we keep you know we are sending money to all our, our pastors to support them outreach passes taking care of them like that so that's what happens so that goes to the general fund and there we keep it as a separate fund yes yes yeah so the money they will come into the general fund from there we'll send it to pastors all right okay so let's uh, move forward we'll come complete this today some other few more thoughts about uh, our church finances here um yeah budgeting it did yeah auditing i mentioned you know there's a weekly audit monthly so weekly monthly is done by our internal and external accountant our own people they come and do it and then semi annual and annual are done by a external auditing firm so in we have our internal accountants we have a external accounting firm and then an auditing firm so in the in the semi annual that's every 6 months and the final annual auditing will be done by independent audit firm They're all based in bangalore only believers the owners are building so that is all done so that's the way audits happen audits means simply check you just check everything you know uh, they look at everything check everything's okay and uh, any problems they will bring it to us we'll have discussions how to sort it out how to fix it so on then financial reports so every month i get financial reports from our accountant so one is called an income expense report so actually uh, in that report there are many uh, there's uh, many tabs but the main one is income expense so it will show all the income and all the expense and the match i mean uh, the income and this is what expense so i'll see uh, the, i will see that our, i will the thing i look at is income 
should be more than expense. If the expense is more than income, okay, what happened? You know, what is going on? That's one report. Now, uh, there's another report called receipts and payments. I mean, uh, similar to income expense, what came receipt, what was paid, uh, they will match. So like a double entry. So I'm getting that report. Now, in the income expense report, there are many other tabs. One tab, for example, is from 2000, uh, I think we go back to, uh, this is 2024. So I think like from 2016 on, uh, the full chart shows every month income expense. So in one page, I can see from 2016 till now, last eight years, um, every month income and expense, total amount. And for the whole year, I see. So I can, in one view, I can see, you know, okay, be, this is how the church has been doing, plus what is the previous months till, you know, so uh, let's say this is now uh, October. So by the 7th of October, I would receive the report for September, till September. Right. So I will see from January, February, March till September, plus previous eight years. I can see in one, one screen, so I can see everything. Okay, so this is where we are. Okay, this is what's happening. Then uh, another screen will show another, in that same report, there's another tab that shows for all the individual uh, uh, heads, like we have 10 main headings, like general fund, uh, build to impact project, uh, missions, um, publications, then we have APC Music, uh, APC Studio, we have uh, the 10 main headings. What was the money that was allocated, or money that was given directly for those funds? That, so that when people want to contribute directly, so what, is, what is the money going there? So this is outside of the general fund. Right? So this is what money is in general fund, but this is what is there in the each head. I can see what has been spent, what is the balance, I can see. I can also see what is the money in our fixed deposits. So when you talk about ex excess funds, I'll show you. So when we have excess funds, we put it into fixed deposit. So every time we have, say, 50 lakhs, we'll go into a fixed deposit. So it'll earn some interest. Rather than just sitting in the main account, it'll earn some interest. And we'll take it out whenever we need it. So I can see how we are doing there. So all this report every... Yeah, yeah, did I miss anything? Okay, one other report we're working on now, uh, another strategy we're working on is what percentage of the general fund is going to various heads, meaning for our staff salaries, what is the percentage we are spending for our rents? What is the percentage of the general fund being spent? for publication, what is the percentage? That means we know that, okay, if we are getting so much money, what is the percentage each month or annually, we, can, we look at monthly, also annually, of the money that is going to all these ministries. So we're working on that report. So then we have a good idea that, okay, where are we putting the money? Yeah. Now we have the amounts, so we need to know the percentages and, uh, then we can tweak it, like many for next year. So we plan, say, for 2025. Our 2025 calendar is already ready. We have sent it out to our staff and all that. When we start planning for that, budgeting for that, we will know what percentage of money is going there to those different ministries. So I can tell them, please plan for this. This is how much money will come for, say, Bible College for uh, this, you know, different ministries. That's how much money will come. Please plan within that, you know. And our goal is to always make sure overall our income always is more than our expense. I mean, don't spend more than what is coming in. You know. So month to month, I will check. And then overall, I'll check. So now, some months we may spend more than income. It's okay because we have surplus income. You know, so example, when you print the books, right? The bill will come after they finish the printing. Suddenly when bill comes, it'll be a big bill because we have printed so many books. To so that month, 
on certain months, the expense will be more than our income. But nothing to worry because previous two months our in income was more than our expense, it'll adjust. You know, so like that you have to watch. This year was a little difficult, so we had, I mean, difficult means in, in this area, income expense. So I had to, you know, just, uh, you know, be tight on many things. Uh, it's not that we don't have money, surplus money because we always have money carrying over from year to year. But at the same time, I have to be careful month to month because if you go month to month, always expense more than income, at some point, whatever you have in the saving will be gone. Right. So we have to be careful. And it's better to be careful month to month than suddenly you wake up one year and say, what happened? Money is not there. Huh? But it didn't happen suddenly. It took many months to get there. Right. So it is better to watch the accounts every month. So I will check. You know, so this year we had a lot, we had to make a lot of uh, tightening things and, uh, you know, uh, had to do a lot of additional reports to see where money is going. Because now what's happened is so much is happening. So many different ministries happening. And uh, I want to know clearly what is being spent everywhere. Because I don't want, my, I don't want money to be wasted. And if we are spending more in a certain ministry and the fruit is not there, then I say that is not money that is spent well. So that one, that judgment you have to make, right? I'm spending so much money. Is what is the result? Is there any fruit? I mean, are we really helping people? Are we really strengthening people? Otherwise, is it worth spending that money? We have to ask those questions. Those questions accountant won't ask. Accountant won't think, right? Accountant will only look at numbers. Yeah, this is there, they'll give you the report. But only you can decide, is it worth spending that money? Accountant doesn't know, right? Only you can say, yeah, that money was worth it because we helped so many people. You know? So for example, I'll say, see our Christian Leaders Conference. Usually, when we have Christian Leaders Conference, we'll spend 4 to 5 lakhs. This year, we spent 16 lakhs for 3 days. Why? Because we had 100 plus pastors from North India. Come. And so then I have to ask the question, wow. We spent more than four times the usual amount because we could have done this within four, four lakhs, whatever. Because we bring all our outreach pastors, so we have to pay for them. They are our outreach pastors. We bring them here every year, pay for their to and fro, them and their leaders. So we want to them also to nurture their next line of leadership. So we say, you come. And you bring your two or three other leaders with you. Let them also be. And so they will come. They bring. We pay for that. So that's the expense. But this year we also had another hundred or seventy some pastors from different parts of North India come. We paid for them all of them. So you come. So question: Is that money well spent or not? Because now we have spent much more than our usual budget. And this happened unexpectedly. Why? Because suddenly they requested. They said, can we come? Uh, you know, we want to come. But can you help us? <laughs> Wanting to come is one thing, but they also wanted help. So this year we said, OK. But it was a big expense. So then I said, see, it is a good thing we did. We did the good thing, you know what I'm saying? But we can't repeat again next year. So we're not doing it in 20, we're having Christian Leaders Conference 2025. We will be a little bit more selective. Now we are, we are bringing all our outreach passes that we do all the year, every year. So we are paying for all of them. But for other pastors who want to come, we will be uh, selective, like we won't pay for like you know a big number. Uh, we will 
be selective. Instead, what we are going to do in 2025 is we will take the conference to North India. See, because a big expense was spent on the travel. Of course, we also provide accommodation, all that. So big expense for travel and accommodation. But if we take our conference to, say, do it in, we are looking at Dehradun or Chandigarh, if we take it there, travel expense goes down. And we can get more pastors. And we can also try to reduce our accommodation expense. So strategy change. The goal is we want to serve the pastors. But how can we do it in a more economical way? Right? So we tried one we, we, in 2024. It, it, they were all very happy. We were all enriched. They were all blessed. But we are looking at also the finance. See, this one, the accountant won't tell you that what is better, right? They'll tell you the numbers, but then you have to decide, OK, is that money well spent, or is there a better way to do the same thing? Or better ways, let us take the conference to North India. Let us do it there, closer to them. More people can come, less expense on travel, and uh, we can serve better. You know, those kind of things, you have to make some decisions and change. Yeah. So that's how these reports help us. You know, the reports are there where to help us make good decisions. Right? It helps us be careful with our money, um, make sure we are always operating in a, in a healthy way, and make all these kinds of decisions. How much should we spend? Oh, is there a better way to do this? And we have to only, you know, as a pastor, as a leader, or as a ministry leader, you have to ask these kinds of questions. Otherwise, if you just happily keep spending money, then uh, things can get into trouble. You know, And you should not be afraid to make changes. It's not a sign of unbelief. You know, like when, when I say, oh, don't spend money on this, don't spend, it's not an unbelief. It's not like, oh, you can't believe God to provide the money. Of course, he's already providing. But now you have to be a good steward. Right? So it's not a sign of unbelief when I say, don't spend money on this. Don't spend money on that. Right? It's more of, God has provided. Now be a good steward. Take care of the money. Make sure it is used properly. Right? Uh, spend it only on what you need to, and in a way that will really help the people. That is how we make decisions. A few last few things. Um, so managing excess funds. So uh, because we are a religious organization, and in India, and according to our trust, we cannot take excess money and use it um, in investing in risky things like stocks uh, and mutual fund and, and those kinds of things. We can only put it in. Either we buy property or we put it in the bank in fixed deposit. Okay. That is what we are allowed to do. So we only do that. We do not, for instance, in, invest in private businesses, those kinds of things. We do not. Now, I know of people who have got into trouble. So I know, for example, when we were living in the US, um, there was a very big ministry, um, very famous, very well known pastor that time, and then after him, his sons took over. Um, but what happened, they were doing very well. They had television stations and all that. But what they, uh, I think it was like after the son took over, or something happened. Okay. So what happened was they took the church money, and they invested it in some sort of a business where the business promised you will get so much big percentage back on your money. So you invest so much, you get, uh, I forget all the numbers now, but you know, 15%, 20%, 25% return on your money. So he took the church money. So remember, this is church money given to do ministry. He took it and he invested in this business venture. And that every, and this is not small amounts, huge amounts. And that whole business thing collapsed. And it was such a shame, not only shame, but the church people all felt so hurt. 
because they had given their tithes and offerings to do the ministry. And here in the idea of uh, you know getting more, he put it in a very risky thing, which is some some business that collapsed, right? And all that gone. Yeah. So there's just one example, but I, I have read in so many Christian you know ministries doing this kind of thing, and it is a big uh, mess. So never do that with church money. Church money, keep it safe. The only safe thing you can do is keep it in the bank, put it in fixed deposit, because you will never lose. It will, of course, the percentage will be small. They usually give six to eight percent. Uh, and but at least one is there. It is in the bank. And when you want to take it, you'll take it back. Yeah, you'll they'll give it back to you with some interest. But it is safe. So I've heard even in Bangalore, you know, pastors they're starting some business with church money. You know, I said, oh, how do, how, what can I tell them? But it is all, it's happening. But you must never do that. This is church money. If you want to start a business, start with your own personal money. That is okay. You're not affecting anybody else's money. But this is church money. People have given it for the work of the ministry. Right. So, don't put it in there. Uh, another thing we have at ABC is when we are so we do not uh, so so let's say suppose we want to raise money for special things example let's say a, a build to impact project do it in a way that it is not a burden to people you know do it in a way that that doesn't become the main thing. The main thing is people are coming to church to worship God. They're coming to receive the word. They're coming to pray. They're coming to fellowship. The money you need to build a building is a side thing. That is, you know, it's a side thing. The main thing is people coming for spiritual growth and journey. But every Sunday if they come to church and you're saying, give money, give money. We have to build a building. Buy a oh, people will get... That is not why they're coming to church. Right? So you have to be very careful how you raise money for these projects. Yeah, share the vision. Keep it there, but don't hit people every Sunday. You know, give money, give money, give money. We need this, we need that. Oh, people will get tired. They're coming to worship God. Let them worship God. Let them receive the word and so on. And another thing is, there should not be any competition between ministries who can raise more money. So that is why we never allow that to happen. Example, let's say we're having a, a example. Let's say we're having Bible college. Okay, Bible college is happening. And uh, we have uh, publications. We don't let some, you know, the Bible college make presentation. You have to give money for Bible college, give money for... And, on the other side, somebody saying, we have to give money for books. You went, no. You don't let that kind of fundraising happen. We tell everybody, give to the general fund. From the general fund, we will use for Bible college, we will use for publication. If you want to give specifically for Bible college or specifically for, you can, just mention that you want it to be used for this. And we let people know what is uh, every end of the year. We send a year of re year in review report, so people know how much we have spent for Bible College publications. We also include in that the plan for the next year, what we are planning to spend. So people know that, but we're not, you know, ministries are not competing for money. You know, you know so we keep that clear. Just keep it out of the way. People know it's there. If you want to give, you give, but we don't let any competition happen. And all our audited financial reports are on our website from beginning till now. So abcw.org slash financials, all our, our reports are there. Anybody can go and see it. And last thing is uh, we have to you know, follow government regulations, which is every month, every year, we have to file reports, which our accountants external accountants will do for us. Yeah? So they do it. We are paying them for it. So they file uh, what money has come and income tax reports. Any questions from the government, we have to go 
and answer all those things our external accounting firm will do for us and uh, we stay stay on the right side of the law okay let me pause here and uh, take questions we have just 10 more minutes on questions for finances any questions Okay, so um, yeah, so the main thing is make sure that any the church and the ministry finances are in good order. Right? So do your best uh, and uh, do it in a way that uh, you can answer people when they come and ask questions and answer the government, the government asks questions, right? Because sometimes even the government will uh, ask these things. Okay, we'll stop here for now. Uh, we'll continue on our new topic next week. Uh, we will stop with our discussion on finances. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll close here. Enjoy the rest of the day. God bless. Bye.